All right, so my friends, welcome. Chapter three of the Wilds of Eldraine complete set review. We're doing every single freaking card. Constructed, limited, giving out the awards you know and love. And I'll remind y'all before we get started though, we got 10 new brews coming on Thursday, all right, folks? You get to see all these cards in action only two days from now. I'll be doing my usual where I play 10 brand new decks on the early access stream. So playing against other content creators, playing really fun brews, trying all the new cards. It's a lot of fun. My article on CoolStuffInc.com will have all the deck lists on Friday. Uh, and then Thursday, we'll have all the 10 decks. And I'll be up on YouTube also. It's a lot of fun. Look for it. Check it out. 10 new brews this Thursday. Starting about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. It depends on when they get, you know, if there's any problems or stuff like that, too. So, very, very exciting. Very, very fun. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button also. Support the channel. Helps out a ton. If it's a content creator you like, let's support them. Hit the like button. It's freaking free. It's free. It costs you nothing. All right? Let's go. Black. Set review time with Ashiox Reaper. 4 mana for a 3-3 three, three Nightmare. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard with the battlefield, draw a card. Pretty good limited card, right? So, of course, uh, with the rolls and the bargain mechanic, which we'll obviously get to in a little bit, um, we're going to see a lot of enchantments dying over and over again. If you just have, like, a creature with a roll on a dying combat, you draw a card also. Uh, so, this is an awesome, awesome uh, effect to have as an engine. And also, it's uncapped here. It's not once a turn. So, you can draw a lot of cards. The body is only okay. Obviously, a 3-3-4 three, three, four, four is not great, but lots and lots of good card draw here. Very, very powerful limited card. Constructed, probably not. Oh, this is some sort of like crazy combo deck, which is not like outside their own possibility, but more of a draft card, but a very, very good one at that. Ashiox Reaper. And by the way, how did Ashiok even get here, right? I thought Planeswalkers were mostly desparked, right? Ashiok, Wicked Manipulator. Ashiok's from Theros, I believe, right? I think, I think, right? Um, Ashiok's here, though. So, not they're all not desparked. Most of them are desparked, not all of them, though. Ashiok, Wicked Manipulator is a five mana Planeswalker. It's honestly kind of boring. Um, this is sort of like your usual plus one, minus two, minus seven Planeswalker, plus one draw, minus two kill, or make a thing, minus seven win with five loyalty, but whatever. Has static effect if you would pay life when your library has at least that many cards in it. Exile that many cards from your top of your library instead. Very weird ability, right? So uh, you crack a fetch land. We don't take one, we exile a card top of our library. Sure. Um, we have a Necropotence in play, I guess, or whatever, you know? So, kind of weird, though, because this card itself doesn't actually pay life for anything, and paying life is, like, a pretty... It's somewhat common, but not that common. Um, so, interesting. You know, we'll see here. Uh, kind of a weird static effect. Plus one ab ability is look at top two cards of your library, exile one of them, put the other in your hand. So, plus one draw a card. Effectively, you know. Minus two makes two one one black nightmare tokens with at the beginning of combat on your turn. If a card was put into exile this turn, put a plus plus encounter on this creature. So two one ones, they can they can grow. Um somewhat similar to, to Lolith or whatever here. Makes two creatures that are decent. Uh can defend itself also, which is kind of nice. And then minus seven. Target player exiles top X cards of your library, X is the number of mana value of cards you own in exile. So win the game. So very, very basic Planeswalker, right? Plus one draw a card, minus two, either kill something or make some tokens, and minus seven win the game. Five mana is a lot for a Planeswalker these days, especially. And don't forget also, this is the format with Shieldra's Edict in it, the literal best removal spell for Planeswalkers of all time. Uh, so that's a pretty uh, pretty tough one. Really, really basic here for Ashiok. This card's obviously going to be fine in standard. If there's a black deck that wants a Planeswalker for a little uh, threat density, or a card draw. This card's fine, but overall, pretty unexciting, honestly. In limited, pretty busto. A little scary, because you could deck with this card, obviously, if you're just, like, exiling two cards a turn. Uh, but, powerful limited card. Medi Medium-ish uh, constructed card. I'm sure I'm missing some stupid combo with this paid life weird passive ability. But yeah, overall, just a weird one, honestly. Kind of a, an odd card. Back for seconds. Three mana is sorcery with bargain. We'll get to Bargain in a second. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. If this was Bargained, you may put one of those on the battlefield if it has mana value four or less instead of putting it in your hand. So what's Bargain? Bargain is a new mechanic. That's basically just Kicker. So you may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast a Bargain spell. And then you get the extra effect on the Bargain. So second thing, Kicker. Of course, this is a set that has food tokens, enchantment tokens, you know, rat tokens, fairy tokens. So there are plenty of things sacrificed in the set itself, as well as in the entire format. 
And uh, this in limited is pretty good, honestly. You know, double raise dead is totally fine in limited. And the fact that you can put the card in play for free is very nice. Being able to get a thing for free and affect the board is very, very important for cards like this because affecting the board is just all that matters in Magic these days. You know, you really can't afford to take time off and not affect the board. This card does do that, which is kind of cool. That being said, this is not really a constructed card. Um, if you could put anything into play so it can get a track star or something like that, sure. But format, uh, format of value or less, this card becomes a little too fair and finicky for constructed. But for limited, this card's excellent. Uh, very, very good draft card. And uh, constructed, I mean, maybe, but probably not. And, you know, there are blood tokens and so on and so forth, treasure tokens, etc. Kind of cool. Barrow Naughty. Naughty, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Two mana for a 1-3 fairy with flying, obviously. It has lifelink as long as you control another fairy. And three mana to give it plus one, plus O to end of turn. This is a good draft card. Um, you know, fairies is the blue-black archetype. And a 1-3 flying lifelink for two is just good. Just a good card, honestly. You know, like... Uh, the ability to kind of like get a few life here and there on blocks. And then later in the game, when you are a little bit flooded, you pump it once or twice. Pumping once or twice doesn't sound very good until you add the life link onto it also. So now you're dealing three and gaining three, which is a pretty big swing. Um, good draft common. If you're the fairy deck, this is a pretty good pretty good draft common for your deck. Not for constructed, obviously, but good draft card. It also wears rolls really well too, right? One roll in this thing, now it's two, four flying life link, which is awesome. So very, very good draft common. Thanks, heart's excellent. Beseech... The Mirror. I won't bury the lead here, folks. Uh, best in show. It's funny because I think this card's actually a little better in older formats than in standard. But this card is phenomenal. And I have cashed this card. All right. So most of my set review is obviously me getting a first look at cards, trying to give you my initial impression. But I've played this card before. Uh, I was at a, I did like a kind of vacation this weekend with my cube. I printed out a few of the cards from this set. And I had a black a mono black deck in my, you know, Legacy Plus Power Level Cube, where this card was one of the best cards in the entire deck. Uh, I had Necropotence, Shield Rune, etc. Uh, card is very, very powerful. Black, black, black one. Sorcery, bargain. Search library for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle. If this spell is bargained, you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost if the spell's mana value is four or less. Otherwise, put it in your hand. So this is basically a Diabolic Tutor. Straight up, right? But if you bargain it, you can play the card for free if it costs four or less. Now, there are a lot of really good format of cards in black and otherwise in both standard and older formats. So in older formats, obviously, shouldered and the one ring. Uh, whatever half you don't have, put it together. Pretty powerful. Um, you know, in standard, there's, you know, uh, Shadow of the Sky is a Wrath. There's different Planeswalkers. Key, a lot of things you can do. You know, Historic, you get a key to the Archive. There's so many different things you can do with this card. Uh, with Karn also... Uh, it's a really, really powerful effect to have uh, on a tutor because, again, you get to get the card immediately. Bring Delight comes to mind as a similar effect that tutors and casts immediately, but Bring Delight's a five mana card that costs uh, a bunch of different colors, much, much harder to use. Uh, this card is great. Uh, this card is really, really powerful. Again, I think more of a card for older formats. Uh, I think this card is better the older the formats are. But even in standard, you're just playing red-black, and you just have a bunch of some blood tokens in play. You cast this, sack of blood, get shouldered, or get a removal spell, or get a planeswalker, or get whatever, uh, which is very, very powerful. So, cards really, really good, really, really exciting. I was very, very excited with this card in my draft deck, which is really, really cool. It's just fun to see new cards do, do things in, in powerful formats. So, really exciting card, cube-worthy card. This is going to be one of the more impactful cards 10 years down the line. We look back at the set card is really 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 good and then in limited it's funny it's a little bit worse in limited because you're obviously not tutoring up that many good things unless you have a good card in your deck and it's a little harder to cast a little harder to bargain so in limited it's fine uh if you're heavy black but constructed absolutely card is excellent moving on to candy grapple what do we got here folks we got our bombing common boom two out of for an instant Bargain. Creature gets, creature gets minus three, minus three, minus three till end of turn. If you bargain it, minus five, minus five. Uh, very simple. Very, very simple card here, right? Uh, last last gasp, two mana instant, minus three, minus three is a very, very good card in general. Uh, soft play, constructed back in the day. Great limited card. And this is that with upside. Very, very similar to, um, to Voltage Surge, where it's like this good, cheap removal spell that can sacrifice a little extra stuff to get more value later. This kills Shieldren Standard, which is awesome as well. 
Um, better than go for the throat. I mean, maybe not, you know, but this is a really, really flexible card, you know, uh, definitely a chance in standard and then a phenomenal card in limited, obviously. And yes, the flavor text is really, really good. Uh, this is the card where the flavor text and the art have to come together to make something more than some other parts. Don't you mean poisonous? Actually, there's no such thing as venomous. Ah! So of course, venomous, poisonous things are like apples where they're in hand, they're, they're not, uh, they're not alive or whatever, and you eat them and you get poisoned. Venomous things are things that bite you. So uh, poisonous, venomous, it's a, it's a great, it's a banger, folks. Great flavor text. Uh, but yeah, definitely a great limited card, obviously. Fringe constructed card as well. Uh, yeah, good, good stuff. Like the card a lot. Just a, just a good card. Candy grapple, too. I mean, come on. This card's got to win flavor of the set, honestly. So very, very exciting. Up next is Conceited Witch. They meant for a 2-3 Menace. With an adventure side of Price of Beauty. One black sorcery. Make a Wicked Roll token attached to a creature you control. So Wicked Roll is plus one plus one and... Crap, I forgot. Uh, ward? Is it Ward 1? I forgot. I'm sorry, folks. The, the wards, there's so many. Oh, when it dies, they lose one life. I'm sorry, right. So it's a plus one plus one or a... When it dies, they lose one life. So... Little bonus here, and again, these these roll things are very very important in, in limited. Uh, it gives you material for bargain, gives you pumps things up. This card's really good. This is a really solid draft common. You know, you just like pump your two drop up or whatever, or at some point just pump something up, and then cast this two three minutes, which is like which is an okay stat for uh, for three. Um, card's good. Card's very very solid draft card. Not a not a high pick, but a card you're happy to have in your draft deck for sure. Good bread and butter limited card. Dream Spoilers. It's funny. I had to check this one. This is actually not a reprint. Um, it's very, very close to a reprint, but not technically a reprint. So in Lauren Block, which of course is uh, the fairy block initially, uh, there's a card called Dream Spoiler Witches, which is almost this exact same card at common, and it was a busted limited card. Four mana for a 2-2 flyer. Fairy Warlock. Whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn, up to one target creature an opponent controls gains minus one, minus one to end of turn. Now, the fairies in that block had much more flash stuff going on, and a 2-2 two, two for four is definitely a much worse stat line in modern day magic. So I think this card is going to go down a little bit uh, as far as the expectations compared to that, that other card, but still a very, very powerful card, right? Play spells in return, play instants, whatever. You have to pick off small creatures, win combat. The kind of card where you untap with it and you feel really, really good. But again, that first cast casting is pretty rough. Uh, a 2 for 4 doesn't really affect the board any meaningful way at all if you're behind, which is kind of tough. But you can also go like to turn 6 where you cast this and play a, a, a spell immediately on their turn, which is kind of cool too. So pretty pretty powerful card, but all in all, uh, I think a little bit tempered compared to what the old card was, but still a pretty good draft card. Ego Drain. As I said in blue, if you miss blue, first off, what are you doing? Go watch it on YouTube if you can, if it's on YouTube. Uh, but my, my best message over blue is Sleep Cursed Fairy, which is a one mana fairy with ward, it's tapped, yada, yada, yada. The reason why it's my best in show is because of three cards. Spell Stutter, which is the mana leak for fairies. And now this is one of the cards also, Ego Drain. This is a fairy thought seize, one black sorcery. They reveal their hand, take a card. If you control a fairy, that's it. It's thought seize. Done. If you don't control a fairy, you have to exile a card from your hand. That's very bad. Obviously. Obviously, you know, if you have to do this, sure. But this is not a thought that you want to cast on turn one. This is more of a turn two, turn three card, which is totally fine in standard. You know, in standard, you almost want to hold your discard spells on turn three or four and try and nab their shield or their big play because your one drops aren't as important. That being said, the templating here is a little bit different than the other black fairy card. And that if they kill the fairy in response, then you don't gain the benefit of it. That needs to be accounted for for sure. However, this is still a really good card. Uh, one black for Thoughtseize is obviously absurd. You know, and Standard has a lot of really powerful things happening. Very mid ranging format also. Uh, this card's just good. This is just a good card. Obviously, contingent on playing a lot of fairies, but there are a lot of those as well. And I'm very, very excited for this fairy deck. Uh, I think this card's very, very good constructed. Good in the fairy deck. In limited, pretty good also, I think. Uh, not too hard to make it work, but not as good, honestly, because, like, the discard effects aren't as good in limited, typically. But, yeah, this is a pretty exciting card for constructed. Um, really looking forward to this one. Uh, 
Don't, 10 new brews. All right. I'll see you there, folks. 10 new brews. Arette's Whisper. Four mana for a sorcery. Uh, mind Rot, make a Wicked Roll. And again, Wicked Roll is plus minus one. And then when the Ord is destroyed, an opponent loses one life. Uh, this is a really fringe limited card. You know, it does make a token. Does not trigger Celebration. Uh, you know, if the format's really, really slow, sure. In Sealed, sure. But this card's really, really slow. Format up to, for a Mind Rot's pretty bad. So very, very fringe limited card. Fairy Dream Thief. Speaking of one mana fairies. One black for a woman flying fairy. When an EDB surveil one, and uh, just a note here, power creep wise. Remember, like, when a woman flyer for one was like, it, it's just, was a no go. Now we get tons of upside. One black, one one flyer, ETB surveil one, which is obviously a very, very good effect. And then you can pay three mana and exile from your graveyard. You draw a card and lose a life. That's awesome. Uh, so this thing just dies. You can get a card from your graveyard also. Uh, this turns on your fairy cards, obviously. Very, very solid beatdown creature as well. Uh, other formats for possibly ninjas and things like that too. So that's sweet. Card's really cool. Very, very solid card. Good and limited also. The fact that you get the card back from this card is excellent because it is a little a little underwhelming. But, and it plays well with itself also too where you can like surveil one of these in the graveyard, which is great too. So just a good card. Good fairy card. But now we come to the really exciting card. Wake up, folks. This is Swords Supply Shares, all right? Close. Not quite, but Close. Fairy Fencing is a black and X. It's an instant. Target creature gets minus X, minus X on the turn. That's not very good, right? That's, you know, disembowel or whatever. Yada, yada, yada. That creature gets an additional minus three, minus three on the end of turn if you control a fairy as you cast the spell. Very, very important. So this one, you cannot get blown out on. As long as you had a fairy, this is a super disfigure. This is Lightning Bolt. One black, minus three, minus three, which is phenomenal, obviously. But the important part here is this card scales as well. So this can kill a Shieldred later on too for uh, for three mana. So for three mana, kill Shieldred. The fact that you have Super Disfigure Lightning Bolt that can also kill Shieldred is phenomenal. Uh, instant speed. This card is awesome. And again, now you've seen the Trifecta. So now we've seen Spell Stutter, which is mana like for fairies, the Thought Seize for fairies, and now the Swords Postures for fairies. And that trifecta is what makes the fairy deck viable. Uh, you, this is what makes you interested in playing some fairy cards that are cheap and might be a little underpowered. Uh, but because you're getting paid off so hard for these awesome spells, that's excellent. So this card's really, really good. Um, this is better than cut down, I think, if you're playing the fairy deck because it's a cut down that's also a, a go for the throat. Probably want to play a mixture anyway, but really, really good card. Card is excellent, excellent, excellent. Big sleeper. Slam Dunk first pick and limited. Uh, if you're the fairy deck, obviously, if you're on the fairy deck, it's like a little worse, obviously, but if you're the fairy deck, this card's a slam dunk. Uh, really good card. Sleeper card for the set in black is Fairy Fencing. On to Feed the Cauldron. <laughs> You've been in the farmer maggots crop. The mana for an instant. Destroy target creature mana value three or less. If it's your turn, make a food. Uh, just a good limited spell. You know, if it's not great in limited, you can't kill big things, obviously, but this card's fun. You gotta kill a creature, make a food, get some value. The food is also a good bargain sacrifice fodder too, so it's a fine limited card. Nothing crazy, just fine. Not a slam dunk first pick or anything like that, but a very solid card you're happy to play in your draft deck. Fell Horseman, four mana for a three three. When it dies, it goes to the bottom, so basically vanilla. Two mana for a raised dead adventure. Again, pretty solid draft card. Not incredible because the body isn't great, and raised dead, you know, you got to make some trades and stuff for raised dead to actually do anything. So it doesn't, it doesn't actually like curve super well because you're not casting raise that on turn two uh but that being said this is a fine draft card a little bit of value a little bit of card advantage not incredible i think this card's just fine but overall good good draft card it's fine gumdrop poisoner the mana for a three two lifelink which is obviously fine when the etbs a creature gets minus x minus x to end of turn where x is the amount of life you've gained this turn that's pretty good if you can gain life obviously uh, and then the adventure part is Temp with Treats, which is a one mana instant to make a food token. This card's pretty good, you know. Um, three to life, like for three, like an ETB kill creature is a very powerful effect. Obviously, gaining life without spending mana is a little bit harder. Uh, so maybe, you, you know, obviously, you can sack a food. The built-in combo here is sack the food and then cast the thingy and kill something and gain some life. In limited, that is Busto, obviously. Phenomenal limited card. And constructed, it's hard to conjure a deck that would want, like, this card... Uh, you know, as far as like 
that gets consistently gaining life, wants to kill things, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it does work with shield, which is like whatever, I guess. But yeah. Could it see Black and did? Absolutely. Would need a proper home. Bomb and limited for sure. Just super, super good card. Uh, but yeah, definitely a, a, a somewhat fringy draft card. Um, I mean, constructed card, but yeah. High Fey Negotiator. We have a big fairy here. Five mana for a three five. Flying. Fairy Warlock with Bargain. When it ETBs, if it was bargained, each opponent loses three and you gain three. Siege freaking Rhino, folks! This is going to be a hell of a limited card. 3-5 uh, five Fire for five is already like almost all the way there on rate. And then this card, uh, again, if you're bargaining at any consistency at all, we've got freaking 3-5 Siege Rhino for five. Blocks excellently, gains you life, deals damage. Uh, yeah, this card is... Siege Fairy is great. Phenomenal limited card. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. It's a fairy. It bargains. Uh, great card. Obviously not by him. It's already constructed. Just play Shielder. But still, great limited card. Big, thick Fey. like that one a lot. On to Hopeless Nightmares. Once again, there is one of these in, in each of the Esper colors, the bargain colors, uh, where it's an enchantment with a value that dies, a value on death. So this is one mana enchantment. When it ETBs, each opponent discards a card and loses two life. When it's put into a battlefield, your favorite from battlefield, Scry 2, and you can just sack itself also. This card's pretty good. Um, I think this card's pretty exciting. So we have this card that, um, right, right by itself, EDBs gains value, right? A, a one mana black sorcery, discard a card, lose two life, wouldn't really be good enough, right? But if you're looking for a fodder effect for your bargains, if you're looking for a, a, an enchantment to sacrifice for other value for whatever it might be, uh, there are a lot of things in this set, especially in black-white, that care about enchantments dying and want enchantments sacrificed to things. This does that, which is great. So this is going to be a pretty important card, I think, uh, for the draft decks. Um, I think this is a pretty cool card, just in general, because the rate's pretty fine. And then this is the kind of card that's going to make your deck a lot better overall, which is great. A little scry also, pretty cool too. This one's good. Uh, watch out for this card when you're playing in limited. If you're playing as a black deck and you have a land and a good spell in your hand, hold that land. Be careful because this is going to be cards you'll see a lot of play and really, really cool. Dormammu, I have come to bargain. No! That's what this card does. I think it constructed. This card definitely has a chance. Uh, any one mana card has a chance to constructed, and this card does enough for uh, for the cost as far as like trading one for one. And also being fodder too, uh, that it could definitely have a chance as well. Constructed cards, exciting. Don't sleep on this card. Very, very cool card. Lich Knight's Conquest. It's a trap. Five mana sorcery. Sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens. So basically, just like mega bargain. Return that many creature cards for graveyard to the battlefield. So the problem with this card is that the ceiling is really high, right? Say we set up, you know, we have a, a, a Traxa and an Atali and a Shieldred and like whatever, like four awesome creatures in our graveyard. And we got a bunch of Bloods in play and we cast this thing and we get them all back. Cool. Probably would have won that game anyway. <laughs> you know? Um, so for five mana, if we can just return it, if this is just a five mana Zombify and we just cast it and get back a Traxa, that is much safer. You know? So... Uh, this card is, it it looks cool, it's pretty fun, but all in all, a very, very finicky card that is way more, way, way overkill. This card costs like three or four, maybe. I think we're talking at that point for sure. But at five mana, this card is pretty rough. It's funny how good this card is with the Fable the Mirror Breaker. Uh, with Fable, this card was a four drop, and, it, and Fable does everything else this card needs to do, but Fable's obviously gone. But yeah. Cool card, pretty fun card, but overall, this is a, a way, way over the top. Uh, just not, you know, good enough for Will I play this card in stream? Absolutely. Is it a fun card? Absolutely. But not really a card I, want, I think you should put in your deck if you're trying to win a lot of games. However, in limited, this card is pretty solid. Um, you know, if you're playing a longer game where things, things are getting sacrificed and so on and so forth, and you just, like, sack two rolls, get back your best two creatures, that's kind of fine. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. Um, Kind of a kind of a kind of a stinker. It is pretty fun. It is a cool card, but this card this card needed to cost four or do something else to really get there. I think. 
Lord Skidder's Blessing. I love Lord Skidder, by the way. We'll get to Lord Skidder. Lord Skidder's awesome. Lord Skidder's Blessing. Two mana enchantment. Whenever it ETBs, make a wicked token. Uh, wicked roll token attached to your control. Again, wicked roll is plus and plus one and on death drain for one. Beginning of your draw step. If you control an enchanted creature, you lose one life and draw a card. So Phyraxian Arena for two, but you must control an enchanted creature. Pretty interesting card, honestly. That's a very powerful effect. Two mana for a Phyraxian Arena is pretty exciting. And it also affects the board, too, right? It's wicked good. Uh, but this is a pretty cool one, honestly. And uh, if there is some sort of, like, you know, roll aura enchantment deck or whatever, this card could be a pretty cool way to uh, to, to rock that and to kind of, like, draw some cards, you know, be an engine, yada, yada, yada. It's also an enchantment that makes another enchantment, which is pretty powerful, too, if you're playing an enchantress deck. Uh, but, yeah, definitely a pretty cool card. Bonkers limited card. Uh, but I think for Constructive, this card could definitely see play. The card is, is honestly quite cool, and uh, it's a cool one. I like this card a lot. Lord Skitter's Blessing, definitely sweet. Up next is Lord Skitter's Butcher. 3 mana for a 2-3. Rat Pheasant. Freaking Ratatouille here. Eh? <laughs> Ratatouille. 3 mana for a 2-3. When it ETBs, choose one. Make a rat token. That's funny. We actually haven't seen a rat yet. So... One of the main mechanics in black and red is the rats. The rats of Eldraine rising up and taking over and cooking food, I guess. And rats are, there are rat tokens that are one ones that cannot block. So they're very interesting and limited because they can't block, obviously, which is like usually what a token will often do. But they're good for fodder and good for attacking. So when the Butcher EDBs make a rat token, sack creature, scry to draw a card, which obviously good if you already have rats. And they can also menace your creatures for a lethal alpha strike. So this is obviously not a constructed card, right? This is not good enough for constructed. But for limited, this card is excellent. Uh, a 2-3 and a, a one one's great rate. Uh, a 2-3 to sack creature and draw cards, good. And then menace is also pretty cool too. So this card's nice, honestly. Good draft card for sure. Uh, the rat deck looks pretty fun, honestly, as far as the Rakdos uh, theme deck in limited. Pretty cool. But yeah, great draft card. Constructed, I mean... No, but sure. But once we look at Lord Skidder of a Sewer King, now we're a little more excited, honestly, for, as far as Shrunkton. This card is a card I've, I've also played with. Uh, this also was in my cube over the weekend, and we had saw this card cast a lot. This card's good. We have a 3-3 three, three for 3. Uh, close to a sleeper card, but not quite my sleeper for this set. Um, what is a sleeper for this set, actually? Did I... What's my sleeper? Oh, the fencing, right. Fencing's really good. So, um... This card's great. This card is very, very similar to a Goblin Robin Master uh, Legion War Boss kind of card. So it's a card that you play it, you get value immediately in form of a token. However, while the token can't block, it's also not forced to attack like War Boss and Robin Master is. And the 3 3 body on Lord Skidder is much better than a 2 2 on Robin Master, right? And then we also have the Every Rat will exile a card of your opponent's graveyard. So you get a little bit of graveyard hate here, too. This card's great. Just sits there, makes tokens. Uh, you know, it's decent sized body. It can block. Tokens can't block, but you can sack them, them for value. Also, this card is really good. I think this card is a definite shot, constructed for sure. Uh, it doesn't really need to be like a rat tribal deck. It just be a card you play straight up for value. But it makes a lot of cool stuff. Uh, if you're sacrificing for value, it's an awesome card. Like this card a lot. Uh, great, great, great draft card. But also just a totally playable card, constructed. Like it a lot. Lord Skitter, Sewer King, uh, definitely will see this card in 10 new brews, no doubt. Mint Strosity. What are we even, what are we, what are we doing here? Make a little noise here, huh? I mean, like, what is happening? Mint Strosity, two out for a 3-1, horror. When it dies, make a food. Um, this card's good. Tomatoes, sausages, nice, crispy bacon. If you're looking for a two drop in your draft deck, this card's sweet. You know, a 3-1 one, one for two is fine. And then you get a free food token when it dies. And obviously, this is a uh, a set a color that wants things to sacrifice for bargain too. So very very solid draft card. Very very bizarre art. Obviously, the whole the whole candy food thing goes a little far for me in this set. But yeah, great great uh great great two great two drop. Every set feels like an unset. Yeah, I kind of agree. But yeah, not dead after all. Any scammers in chat? Any scammers out there? One mana for an instant. Until end of turn. Target you control gains when this creature dies. Return to the battlefield tapped under its owner control with a wicked roll token attached to it. So, uh, this card is obviously a modern staple, which is kind of funny. 
uh, and that it is just strictly better than the other scam cards in Rakdos Scam and Modern. So if you play a Grief on turn one and then not dead it after all, uh, the Wicked Roll token is just better than a Puzzle Puzzle Encounter because it has a little bit of a, a little bit of life loss. Uh, aside from that, not a very exciting card, just like the, all the scam cards are not. But if you're playing a format that has elementals in it, sure. I don't know why you're doing that, I guess. But um, but sure. Uh, and limited, it's okay. You know, obviously adding um, the Stud Trigger Celebration by itself. Creature comes back, the token goes back, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's also an enchantment, which is kind of cool as well. So but it's an okay limited card for sure. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I just hate that scam deck, so whatever. Rankle's Prank. Format a rare sorcery. Choose one or more. Each player discards two. Each player loses four life. Each player sacrifices two creatures. Um, I would have liked this card a lot more if it had a fourth option of each player draws two cards uh, to kind of like go with the Rankle theme. Because what makes Rankle so cool in like the Waste Not decks is you can make them draw a card and then discard it. Uh, or is, is, is yeah or, or whatever you you can't they can't discard the card they draw of Rankle, but you can put cards into their hand uh, to discard with later with, so waste lock and trigger, which is kind of cool. So um, I think it's missing that, which kind of sucks. But all in all, this is barter and blood, or double mine rot, or this weird damage spell. I think this card is going to be a lot better than it looks. It's kind of a weird card because like these abilities are all very non congruent. Typically, you would play the Barter and Blood, like each player sacrifices creatures effect in a control deck where you don't want to lose life and don't want to discard cards. Typically, you would play, you know, discards two cards if your hand's empty, but then you don't want to sacrifice creatures. If this is like a, you know, uh, super hyper aggro black deck, and then on turn four or five, you cast this with an empty hand, make them as like a super lightning, kind of cool too. But I think the power level is here. It just comes, just comes down to like, is there a deck that can adequately use this card? Uh, because it is very finicky, but the power is there for sure. I like this card. You know, this is a deep sleeper, if you will, for my fantasy football folks. Uh, but kind of a cool one. In limited, if you're a control deck can and can make use of the barter and blood, I think this card's fine. But it is a weird one. You know, it is definitely a weird one, but definitely cool. It's also cool if you're a super go wide deck with a bunch of tokens. Your opponent's playing like you know a couple big creatures, but yeah, cool, cool card for sure. Very interesting design. Very curious to see what it does. Rat out. There's hilarious names here, right? One black instant. Minus one, minus one. Make a rat. Um, obviously a fine limited card. You know, we've seen, we've, seen, we've, seen, we've seen this kind of card before. This is worse than Fungal Infection, which makes a woman token that can block. Uh, but yeah, you know, this is a uh, an okay limited card. It's fine. Rowan's Grim Search. The metaphor an instant with Bargain. Draw two cards, lose two life. If a spell is bargains, look at the top four cards of your library, put two back on top, and the rest in your graveyard. So, basically, you get to scry first if you bargain it. This is uh, this is an okay card. You know, uh, I don't love Sign and Blood effects uh, in general because of how much of a tempo game magic is these days as well as playing to the board. However, uh, Instant Speed makes it a lot better. And then you get to surveil cards of your graveyard and kind of do the happy bargain. Definitely the bargain here is pretty thin uh, in that like you're not getting a ton of value from bargaining it, but it's also kind of reasonable. This is definitely a, an okay draft card. If you're like some sort of like graveyard and permanent base deck, maybe constructed. Uh, but but yeah, kind of cool. Just mill some cards also. Shadow Prophecy in general. Yeah, or Shadow, Shadow Prophecy, you know, adjacent for sure. Uh, but kind of a cool card. Could see play constructed. Definitely cool limited card. Definitely very, very deck dependent though. Scream Puff. Tired of these uh, these candy cards yet? One candy card is fun. Ginger Brute, etc. 10 candy cards is a little much. Too much sugar. Five mana for a four, five death touch. Does combat damage to a player make a food. Just a fine limited filler card. Not, you know, not super unhappy to play it in your draft deck, but I would prefer not to if possible. Shadow of the Oath. This one's got really cool art. Really cool art, this one. Five mana for a sorcery. Kill a creature or enchantment. Make a wicked roll. Augment your creature. Ah, just a good card. You know, it's just a good removal spell, limited. A little clunky, but a lot of value here for sure. Uh, getting a roll token is excellent. Because uh, you can sacrifice later for value also. Augments your creatures, yada, yada, yada. Uh, clunky for sure, but good limited removal spell. 
Specter of Mortality. We have a 5 mana 3-3 three, three flyer. When it ETBs, you may exile one or more creature cards from your graveyard. When you do, each other creature gets minus X, minus X on end of turn, where X is the number of cards exiled this way. So, right off the bat, this is a slam dunk limited, limited bomb. Uh, this is a limited wrath that's also a flyer, which is insane, and it's totally scalable. So, limited-wise, it's hard to imagine a better limited card, honestly. Constructed-wise, um, this is a... I'm sorry, a limited wise, constructed wise, I can't talk. Constructed wise, this is a pretty interesting card because the power level is there, right? This is a pretty cool way to like wrath a board of tokens or whatever, or something like that. But like the question becomes what deck wants this five mana, three, three flyer, pseudo wrath that requires you to have cards in your graveyard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think there really is one. So constructed, maybe like a fringe, fringe player constructed but overall, I don't think this one is uh, is really going to play here. The cards in your graveyard needing to be creatures is very, very limiting. Uh, so overall, Constructed, I don't think it's there, but Slam Dunk Bomb and Limited for sure. Spiteful Hex Mage on black for a 3-2. When ETBs put a Cursed Roll token on a creature you control. So this is kind of a cute card where, you know, play it on turn one. It gets its own Cursed Roll which then you can sacrifice for value and have a 3-2 for 1, which is kind of cool. The problem is a 3-2 for 1 isn't even that exciting in these days, you know, like, as far as Constructed goes. So, kind of a cool card, though. Um, definitely for limited, this card's sweet. Uh, a 3-2 that gives you some, a thing to sacrifice at a pretty good rate, which is nice. If there is some sort of deck in Standard that wants to bargain over and over and over again, this is a decent enabler for that also. Uh, but yeah, kind of a cool, cool design, fun card. Uh, but yeah, you know, all in all, that's, that's cool. Cool card. Stingblade Assassin. Format for a 3-1 Flash Flyer. When the ETB is destroy a creature damages damage this turn. Uh, this is a pretty common card we see in Limited. This having flying is kind of cool. This is really good with the rat tokens, um, which makes this card a little better than previous versions of this card we've seen before, uh, where the rats are like a thing that your opponent's going to want to block fairly often, and the presence of this card might make them not want to block, which is kind of cool. So I think it'll we'll, we'll play okay in Limited in the rat deck. It is a fairy but I think it's actually better in the Rat deck, the, the Rakdos deck. Uh, but yeah, okay, limited card. Wouldn't want a ton of these. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't take it super highly, but, you know, it's kind of cool. Sugar Rush. Yes, more, more, more sugar cards. So then for an instant, plus three, plus out, end of turn, draw a card. This card's fine. Like, really good with the Rats. Again, Cantrip, it's cheap. This is a fine limited card. Uh, wouldn't want a ton of these, uh, but yeah, kind of weird this card is black also. Uh, feels like a red card for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's fine. Fine draft card. Sweet Tooth Witch. The mana for a 3-2. Limited bread and butter. When it enters the battlefield, make a food token. Pay two, sack of food. Drain for two. Card's fine. Just good, good card. Again, the more important part here is the food being a, uh, a bargain chip. Uh, but that's great, honestly. A 3-2 that makes, that makes the bargain chips great. So, solid limited card. Nothing crazy, but solid. Taken by Nightmares. Four mana instant exile creature. If you control enchantment, scry two. Slam dunk first pick and limited. Uh, four mana exile creature instant rule spell is phenomenal. And any upside on top of that's also phenomenal. So not playable constructed. Phenomenal limited card. Uh, first pick. Tangled Colony. We got some more rats here. Two mana for a rat that can't block. When this thing dies, make X rat tokens with this creature can't block. Where X is the amount of damage dealt to it this turn. So it's a 3-2. So, kind of similar to that white card, where it's like a 3-2 for 2 that can't block, but if it's dealt with in a, a manner that is damaged, so a red removal spell or a blocker, it gets to explode so much tokens, but if you just, like, cut down this, it does nothing. But it's a 3-2 for 2, which is fine also. So, I think this card's pretty cute. Um, you could, in theory, like, build around it where you, like, play, you know, some you know, Blasphemous Act kind of card or whatever to kill their stuff and kill your thing and make rats too. Probably not worth the squeeze here, but realistically, just a fine two drop. If you're like a rat deck and trying to do the rat thing, this card could be fine tribally. Uh, but yeah, it's fine. Good limited card for sure. Just like a really good rate on a limited card. Not being able to block is a little tough, uh, but still, good solid card for sure. The end. And in the end, block back to instant. This spell costs two less to cast if your life total is five or less. Exile to our creature or Planeswalker. Search controller's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name as the permanent. 
exile them. That player shuffles and draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. So, this is a interesting card because 4-mana instant exile creature Planeswalker is honestly not that bad. You know, Veracity's Contempt was a pretty playable card in Standard. That gained 2 life, which is, you know, fine, but whatever. Uh, this card, however, you know, I think we're a little past Veracity's Contempt being, you know, a good card in Standard, but it's playable for sure. And hitting your opponent's Shieldred, hitting your opponent's, like, really good Planeswalker or whatever it might be, is pretty effective, honestly, you know? So, I think this card is a fringe player in Standard. I think cards like this are usually very bad. This one's pretty reasonable, though. And obviously, for behind Cast for 2, it's great. And then the fact that Beseech the, uh, whatever it's called, uh, that can go find one of these in your deck and, like, exile their attracts their shoulder, whatever it might be, is pretty cool also... So, I think this card's pretty good. Uh, obviously, a bomb limited card is just the same card as the last card we just saw. Uh, but I think overall, this card is pretty damn solid and constructed, despite looking like a card that would be bad. Although, I would not play a ton of this card. And it would definitely be a card that you might just want to sideboard instead. Because uh, if your opponent's playing Monarch, this card's just stains, you know? But, cool card. Cool art, too. I actually like the art of this card a lot. The Witch's Vanity, to mana for a Saga. Chapter 1, destroy a creature your opponent controls mana value 2 or less. Chapter 2, make a food. Chapter 3, chapter three make a wicked roll token attached to a creature you control. This card's pretty good. Obviously, you need a target for Chapter 1 here. Uh, so, in limited, if your opponent's play a 2-drop, you know. But, um, if it does work, it's really, really good. And then, honestly, this could be a pretty good sideboard card for, like, a, a black deck in standard against, like, an aggro deck. If this always kills a creature for 2 mana and just makes a food and then makes a roll... That's a lot of material for only one card and two mana. So, pretty cool, honestly. Cool bargain enabler. Um, I think this card is a lot better than it looks and definitely has a chance in, a chance in Constructed. And it is, is good and limited, but again, your opponent has to have a lot of two drops. You know, you, you need to cast and kill a creature, and two or less is a little tough. But Twisted Sewer Witch. Five mana for a 3-4. When ETBs make a rat, then for each rat you control, make a Wicked Roll token attached to that rat. This card is an insane limited card. <laughs> wow. 3-4 for, for, for 5. So it makes a rat and then puts a Wicked Roll on every rat you control. So if you have like 4 rats in play or 5 rats in play, all of a sudden you have an army of 2-2s. Two and when they die, they drain for 1. This card is excellent. Slam dunk. Uh, uncommon. For Constructed, I mean, if it was like a rat deck in it's actually good. This could be a Curve Topper, maybe. But for limited, slam, slam, dunk, mythic, uncommon card is phenomenal. Uh, Twisted Sewer Witch, insane. Hoping that I first pick, pick one, pack one this card in Bronze to Mythic, which is starting next week. We got to Virtue of Persistence. No awards, but this card is very good. Um, five mana enchantment. Beginning of your upkeep, put a creature card from a graveyard on the battlefield under your control. So... A better Debtor's Now, because it's easier to cast. And Debtor's Now is a pretty damn powerful card if it gets into play. However, the adventure here is pretty excellent. Two mana for a sorcery, last gasp, minus two, minus three, gain two life. Now, it is a sorcery. If this thing's an instant, this is like one of the best cards in the set, I think. At sorcery speed, obviously not as exciting, because it's a little awkward on the draw, so on and so forth, yada, 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 or on the play, I mean. But minus two, minus three, gain two life, it's just not a fine card. You know, it's just a fine removal spell. And then you can't play the removal spell, trade one for one. And now all of a sudden you just have this like insane end game card just sitting there off to the side for free, which is very, very powerful too. So I think this card's going to see a lot of play. I think this card's very, very good. Uh, not quite best in show for black, but I think this card is quite excellent. Uh, probably a, might be a better standard card than Beseech the Mirror, uh, but a worse card in, you know, the, the total totality of magic. Uh, this is a really, really powerful card. I think this card's excellent. Uh, this is going to be the end game of a lot of decks in standard for sure. And the fact that it's on this cheap card is great too. But yeah, card's really good. Very, very excellent. Great art. Just a cool card. Uh, not quite Bone Crusher in that like, you know, the seven mana card will not matter a lot of the games, whereas Bone Crusher mattered every game. Uh, but yeah, cool card. Very powerful. Voracious Vermin. They mana for a 2-1. When ETBs make a rat... Whenever a creature you control dies, put a counter on this. This is like your kind of finicky limited card that grows and can win the game. 
but it's pretty fragile. You know, a two one for for three is is rough. And the problem is you you can't block with the rats. So if you're behind, this card's really really bad. That being said, it's not about a bad card for your rat deck if you're playing Dre playing unlimited. So, you know, archetype fringe card. Warehouse Tabby, the poor freaking rat. One black for a cat. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard of the battlefield, make a rat, and then pay two and gives death touch till end of turn. Kind of odd that like the the cat doesn't actually kill rats, but whatever, sure. Um, and uh, obviously they death touchers for uh, yeah, right. Why well, is a one two? So you can like kill a rat and not and live to tell if it's there. Very huge flavor fail. It should definitely be a one two. Uh, but uh, yeah, so death toucher, clunky death toucher. Usually the one one death touch for 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 one is like very very good in draft, but this is a very very clunky one. However, it does you know make some value if you are bargaining over and over and over again. So you can sack an enchantment, get a rat, set the rat. Pretty cool too. Uh, but yeah, definitely um an interesting interesting draft card for your. Uh, your deck's a little low impact, but yeah, it's cool. Wicked Visitor. Wicked. Two out of four, two, two. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard in the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. Fine two drop. If you're playing the bargain deck. There you go. Fine two drop. Not amazing, just fine. Archetype, you know, level card. So, to recap for Black, we got Beseech the Mirror as our best in show. Our sleeper card is Fairy Fencing with honorable mention to, uh, Auto mention to the, to the Rat King, and we've got Lich Queen's Lich Knight's Conquest, Lich Knight's Conquest as our trap card, and Candy Grapple as our bombing common. That's black, folks. Like, comment, subscribe, hit all the buttons, do all the things, and I'll see you in red.